практичні стрільби з зенітно-артилерійського комплексу SkyNex і по різних типах повітряних цілей. Усі злагоджено працюють. Слава Україні! Ukraine's surprise offensive into Russian territory is perhaps the most daring adventure in more than two years of war, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, said. CBS News reports, this is a big psychological blow to Russian thinking, in particular to Putin, because for the first time since World War II, Ukrainians have penetrated Russian territory, he noted. At the same time, Milley noted that the territory of almost 1,300 square kilometers is only a dot on the map of the Russian Federation. So with three open flanks, it could be risky. The Russians can concentrate their forces, cut them off and defeat the Ukrainians, the expert warned. When asked whether he expected Russian leader Vladimir Putin to launch a major counter-offensive to retake his territory, Milly replied, that's at least one possibility that could well happen in the coming months. Milly believes that President Volodymyr Zelensky, with the operation in the Kursk region, is betting that the defensive lines in Ukraine will hold while he opens a new front on Russian territory. He took a calculated risk to put himself in a strong position for what he thought would be the start of some negotiations, perhaps next year. The military officer explained, in particular the general is referring to the risk of whether the US will continue to provide Ukraine with sufficient weapons to combat Russian aggression. If somehow that aid is cut off, if Europe or the United States does not support Ukraine, then I think it will be very problematic for Ukraine to continue its fight. Milly warned. Earlier, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky stressed that the Ukrainian armed forces operation in the Kursk region had already shown some results. According to him, it slowed down the Russian Federation and forced them to transfer some of their forces to Kursk. Our fighters in the East are already saying that they are being hit less often. I am not saying that this is a resounding success or that it will lead to the end of the war or the end of Putin. This has shown our partners what we are capable of. The head of state noted. In turn, Igor Shultis, a serviceman of the Nachtigal Battalion, spoke about the reaction of the Russians to the invasion of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region. According to him, the Russian army actually resisted, but the civilian population showed no desire to actively resist. After blowing up a huge arsenal in the city of Toropets in western Russia, Ukrainian drones carried out a second strike on the site and attacked Tikhoretsk in the south of the aggressor country. As Forbes writes, there is no confirmation, but Ukraine is likely using the Palyanitsya drone rocket for these strikes. The Toropets warehouse contained significant stockpiles of small arms, mortar shells, artillery rockets and long-range ballistic missiles, including Russian Iskanders and North Korean KN-23s. The Tikoretsk warehouse is one of the three largest ammunition storage bases and is one of the key ones in the Russian military's logistics system. The general staff estimated that there were 2,000 tons of ammunition there at the time of the strike, including North Korean-made shells. The towering fireball that resulted from the strike confirms this assessment. These explosions in the warehouses caused local earthquakes and were visible from space. Successive raids on ammunition depots signal a shift in Ukraine's deep strikes campaign against strategic targets inside Russia. For months, Kyiv 
has been asking its European and American allies for permission to strike Russia with British Storm Shadow, French Scalp EG and American missiles, but has been repeatedly refused. Apparently running out of patience, the Ukrainians have doubled down on their production of homegrown weapons, drones and missiles they can fire at targets inside Russia without asking anyone's permission first. The latest attacks also signal an increase in the scale of Ukraine's deep strikes. Previous raids, some of which hit targets up to 1,800 kilometers inside Russia, were impressive in terms of logistics, but small in scale, the newspaper notes. However, the latest raids have been far more destructive, indicating weapons that do not fly as far as the Ukrainian drones, but are more powerful and in sufficient numbers. Russians in Toropet claimed to have heard jet engines overheard before a local ammunition depot exploded, also pointing to Palyanitsia. The missile has been in development for over a year and recently made its combat debut, hitting a target in occupied Crimea on August the 23rd. Palyanitsia boasts an AI PBS 350 turbojet engine jointly developed by PBS in the Czech Republic and the Ukrainian firm Ivchenko Progress. This engine produces 3,400 newtons of thrust, enough to propel the one-ton missile several hundred kilometers. This makes the Palyanitsia similar to the Neptune cruise missile with a turbofan engine. However, the latter is more expensive to produce. The jet missile, also less effective, is also cheaper. This allows them to be made in much larger numbers.